welcome to my fourth episode of this fashion series if you haven't already please go and watch one two and three as will make a lot more sense why i'm doing this um so yeah go and take a look at those but this one is a specific episode i did say some will be specific and some will be generic videos so the last specific one i did was haute couture and that was my second episode so go and watch that if you haven't already gone and watched it but this one today is on landmarks i'm sure you've seen it on the thumbnail already i love landmarks i'm definitely that person that when they go traveling like my family will be there sunbathing and i'll be like researching you know what temples are in the area or what landmarks are in the area or whatever i just love sightseeing and stuff like that so I was so happy when I um, did some research and found fashion events that centred around landmarks so I thought I would share them with you today. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So to start off with, I wanted to speak about a lady who is extremely inspiring to myself. I think she's absolutely superwoman. She's amazing. She is called Jessica ming -Ung. Now she is not just a fashion show designer and producer but also a supermodel herself so she knows what it's like on the catwalk and she knows how to create extraordinary events so she has these extraordinary concepts of how um, a fashion venue or where a fashion venue should be and locations and ideas she's absolutely amazing she has done fashion shows at Twin Towers, at Tower Bridge, River Seine in Paris. She's also done the first Sunday catwalk in Dubai. She also has the world's, um, a world record for the world's highest fashion catwalk, but I won't speak too much about that one. So she has, she uses extreme locations to really project her, um, a collection and make it come together and be amazing. So she is insane. She's also an advocate for renewable energy and has promoted by green technology, hydroelectric uh, power, solar power, wind power. So she's got it all going on. And she was the first person to center a catwalk, a fashion show around um, global sustainable supply chains as well. That was in New York and they worked with DHL Express. So she's really got a modern mindset because she was doing this back in like 2015, like ages ago. She's had this um, modern mindset and she definitely shows how the younger generation of set designers of fashion show producers can be so refreshing and definitely set the bar for future set designers future fashion um show producers she just she's just amazing and a beautiful supermodel herself and done absolutely incredible set designs and locations for fashion shows as well <laughs> So the first fashion event of this episode four that I want to be speaking about is an amazing one. It is the Jay Autumn Spring 2015 show. And this was designed and produced by Jessica Ming Ung, who I briefly spoke about earlier. Now she completely threw out the park this one. She did an amazing job. It was 4,000 feet catwalk above the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon. Now the Grand Canyon is stunning, somewhere that I would love to visit one day. They were that high up, the models must have had to have been so brave. But the catwalk itself was in like a semicircle um, and it went round and it was a glass floor. It was quite wide and um, yeah, transparent floor. So imagine how scared the models must have been. And it was an hours long catwalk as well. Now, Grand Canyon, I just imagine being there and being completely like, I can't breathe, like taking my breath. So imagine kind of trying to bring that feeling while you're seeing the collection. So when you later see the collection in a magazine, hopefully the audience will be breathtaking and <gasps> because they remembered that experience of seeing it at the Grand Canyon. So I feel like that was a brilliant and creative thought to have to do um, for this fashion show. Now the concept was meant to be models walking in the sky. It was called the best new bridge. It was called the skywalk. I can literally see why it'd be called the skywalk because it's literally like they're walking in the sky, especially with the glass floor. They have beautiful gowns, their hair was very large and beautiful headpieces as well. Now it was exclusive VIP guests and international press because I can imagine it being quite a hard venue. Well, it's not really a venue, is it a location to bring loads and loads of people to um, and make comfortable and stuff. And they actually sat across um, 
opposite the catwalk and it was meant to be like the models were walking in the sky so a brilliant brilliant concept and such a clever idea i mean i bet it cost a fortune to build that bridge and you know make secure for everyone to enjoy the event there but definitely one i will remember and 2015 like, i think that's very innovative for 2015. <laughs> So the next fashion event for this episode is the Fendi Autumn 2016 Orca Tour. Now this was absolutely amazing, honestly. So it was to celebrate Fendi's 90th year anniversary and they had it at the Trevier Fountains in Rome, somewhere I would absolutely love to go. Now the Trevier Fountain is probably the most well-known fountain in the world. Um, I'm sure everyone knows what the Trevier Fountain is and it was a 2.4 million pound restaurant restoration for this show so they actually built a clear glass runway on top of the water and this was to give the illusion that the models were walking on water and I feel like it really did and the Trevier fountain itself is so beautiful so it was definitely gonna be a gorgeous backdrop for this um, iconic collection so they walked on the water and the theme of the collection was legends and fairies and there was actually an official hashtag for the show called hashtag legend and fairy tales so that's very modern very new um i like that a lot and the garments for this show was absolutely gorgeous and the hairstyles were very tight ringlets some half up half down ribbons um there were some very well-known models like kendall jenner um bella hadid ruth bell there was lots of well-known models for this it was very very beautiful and then just to scale it back a bit from a guest's point of view. So they were actually flown from Paris because it was at the Orc Tour, flown to Rome for this show in first class. Um, there was actual um, Fendi like over the seat kind of material. It was just cool as though it said Fendi on the seats. It was just so cool. And I think there's something iconic about being flown out to Trevier Fountain, which is so beautiful to see beautiful collection by Fendi as well. Like I just think it's so clever because anytime anyone thinks of an amazing event they'll think of oh Fendi because I got flown from Paris to Rome to the amazing Trevier Fountain to see the amazing collection so it's such a clever iconic um fashion event <laughs> So the third fashion event that I'll be speaking about in this episode is the East Saint Laurent Spring 2022 Ready to Wear. So a very, very recent one. And they probably use the most iconic um, landmark in the world. I don't know what the most iconic landmark is in the world, but I can probably guess the likelihood of it being the Eiffel Tower is very, very, very high. Everyone knows what the Eiffel Tower is. I've personally been lucky enough to go and see the Eiffel Tower. Um, in the day and at night so i've seen it twinkle and they definitely played on the twinkle because the twinkle there is something magical about it so this event was set at night it was dark with the eiffel tower twinkling now what was very very clever was it was obviously around the time of the pandemic or what we are still going through now um and a lot of fashion houses went digital went virtual but at the time of this fashion event the restrictions had loosened a bit so instead of just thinking yeah we'll do a virtual call they actually thought, no, we'll do it in a beautiful landmark outside. So obviously COVID restrictions um, will be okay. So obviously if you've been to the Eiffel Tower, there's so much room around it. So restrictions, social distancing could all be done. Uh, definitely a very, very beautiful um, landmark. But I don't know how innovative I would say it is because Yves Saint Laurent did do it for the spring 2018 as well. But Again, I don't really think it can get old. The Eiffel Tower is stunning um, with the light sparkling and stuff as well. There was um, 62 looks. Um, there was suits, leather dresses, bright reds, bright purples, blues, um, clutch bags. It, it was very, very sophisticated. And at, right at the start of the show, the sound was just click clop of a lady's heels. Like, I can't see her. But I can hear her and it kind of built the kind of tension up and the power that these models were holding but then throughout the rest of the show there was lots of different music so I had a bit of Spanish a bit of like um electronic kind of music and it classical dramatic at the end like there was kind of a lot going on there was also thunder waterfalls like it was crashing down and strobe lights and then a big 
pyrotechnic for the end and it was just very beautiful they had big huge structures as well with these lights on um and then all the obviously audience sat around watching it it was very very beautiful and very very iconic i would have loved to have been there um and i think Issa and Laron really really played on it and the suits were very shoulder pads and i felt like that really mimicked kind of the shape of the eiffel tower being a strong structure and that's kind of just what i got from it but i thought it was really really amazing and definitely an event i would love to have gone to so the penultimate fashion event for this series is the dolce and cabana 2019 autumn moda now this was to show their fall winter 2019 orchid tour and they chose a stunning 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 venue they chose the temple of concordia in italy and with this they decided like orchid tour the temple had elevation from the greeks who what, built this gorgeous temple so i completely understand the reference behind that now it was a stunning stunning um temple ancient Greek with a Doric style, the most well-preserved temple of its existence in fact. So this was a gorgeous backdrop, it had huge huge um, posts and pillars with stunning stairs up to it but actually before the event tourists and travellers who come and see this gorgeous temple could only walk around and um, the exterior of the temple but after this fashion show so Dolce and Cabana actually had experts and architects in to build the floor in order to have um, this fashion show so now the tourists are able to go inside it so I feel like it's so nice that Dolce and Cabana gave something to the community gave something to the world to go and enjoy this temple from the inside as well so I really really liked that um, but back to the collection it was 125 um, elaborate pieces with um, Greek and Roman kind of mythology they definitely tried to play in with the goddesses and each piece was actually named after a divine being like I love all this like history behind this collection and them incorporating the history of this now there was actually golden um crossbows in this um fashion show golden shields you know golden um sandals up to the knees i just loved all the little pieces that they played with like this and they created such a beautiful fashion show when i looked at the photos of the shoes the models look so empowered in their gold with the gorgeous temple background i just think it was absolutely iconic and beautiful just so so beautiful like i can literally see it in my brain now that's how um iconic it was so now on to the final fashion event of this episode it is fendi's great wall of china fashion show in 2007 now this was to show their spring summer 2008 collection now the great wall of china is an iconic landmark it is so large it was a 1500 mile catwalk i don't know if that is the longest catwalk in the world but that is pretty long um it was huge so the great wall of china was created in 221 bc so it's very very old with lots of history it was actually created to preserve um the chinese border so i wonder if the models had a sense of you know um protecting a country and feeling empowered by the history and all the um, stories that kind of happen and revolve around this wall as well. Now, there was beautiful looks here. I know that Fendi had an issue securing a permit to do this for their um, fall um, 2007 collection, I believe. So I think they were happy that they finally got to do it. Now, the idea to bring Fendi to China and to show the collection off here came from CEO Michael Burke, and he actually used Hong Kong graphic designer as well, Terence Chu, to help him out with that. So I feel like this show would have been absolutely amazing to have gone to, you know, a huge, huge runway, such an iconic um, venue. It would have been absolutely amazing to go to. <laughs> So I hope you've enjoyed um, discovering or learning more about the fashion events that I've spoken about in this episode. I think with all of these fashion events, having such an iconic location, I don't know if I call them a venue as such, but location and how beautiful and historic they are, seeing a collection there really makes you um, connect deeper with it because every time you see that collection out of that location you'll think oh i feel the connection that i had when i saw it there because it's a breathtaking location that you first saw the collection at um so i think it's very very important to use the beauty of mother nature the beauty of our ancestors what they have created to show off extraordinary collections in the future and 
yeah it was just amazing now i hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as i have enjoyed making it like i said we've got two more left so one will be a generic episode and the next and then the final one sorry is another um specific episode so obviously thank you for watching and i hope you have a lovely day please do like and subscribe if this is for you as well